There is nothing new age. It's been around since the beginning. But we don't need to embrace old arts to have Satan live in us. All you have to do is embrace what gives him power over you. Sin will pull you away from God's word and will. It will separate you from his presence. It will make you without his aid and friendship and support. It says in John chapter 14 verse 23 and 24, the importance of how we need to follow God to be connected to God. Jesus says to his disciples, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. It's important if we want God to be in us, to be in our lives, to be dwelling with us, to his presence to be upon us, that we need to be following God. If we love him, we need to be showing it. Verse 24, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Christ is speaking through the Father's will. And if we truly love God, we will follow him. And if we don't love God, we will follow the devil. We will live according to the world and its standards, not according to God's. It's important to know that we got to not run beyond what he has taught us. We ought to not be kids just running across uh, the, the, the places he has told us not to go that are dangerous. He is our Father. We need to pay attention to what he says. In 2 John, chapter, uh, 2 John verse 9, it says, Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Christ's teaching, the general application of following the truth, shows that we belong to Christ, that we have God in our lives. God is with us. He is our friend, our support, our aid. If we run ahead and we do not follow his word, then we do not have God. We are not accepted by him. Habitual sin, my friends, will put a celestial stamp on your head saying, I belong to Satan. Habitual sin will make you his sock puppet. If you're following the devil's will and inclinations, you're doing what the world tells you to do, you're not controlled by God's word. You're controlled by something as someone else. 1 John 3, verse 7 says a very important fact. It says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he, referring to God, is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. If you want to belong to God, you live a lifestyle of goodness, holiness, service to the word and his will, to the saints. If you want to be along to the devil, you fornicate, you murder, you lie, you steal, you live according to the sinful standards of the world. Lying, gossip, neglecting church attendance, hate, malice, false teaching, envy, slander, apathy, bitterness, profanity, lust, self-ambition, greed are his strings that pull a weak-willed saint around. If you let the devil pull you around by some habitual sinful lifestyle, lead you by the nose, then you're the devil's. You belong to him. You're owned by him. You're not owned by God. This is how it was for those who weren't his for a time. Those that have come to Christ should know better though. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 through 3, it gives us a very important statement. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins it means we were cut off from God we were separated death means separation in which you used to live when you follow the ways of the world of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient those who are disobedient the devil's working at them he is the god of this world he's a spirit and this is his kingdom and if you are part of his citizenship, you will show it by how you live according to his rules and his way. Let's continue reading. Verse 3. All of us who lived among them at one time gratified the cravings of our flesh and followed its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. There was a time when we were just living, doing whatever we wanted. If we wanted to, 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 to lie, we could lie. Steal, we could steal. Lust, if we would lust. Do drugs, we would do drugs. Get drunk, we would get drunk. You know, uh, profanity, we would spout it off. If we 
and at that time were of the world we lived, like the world, following our flesh, our cravings, our desires. But, and we were objects of God's wrath, but, 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 now, if we have turned from that, we belong to God. We are no longer under Satan's rule. We are no longer under his control. We belong to God's friendship, his house, his support is with us. God cannot yet have his providential working in our lives, his power, his purpose, his acceptance in our lives if we are living according to the world. We need to understand this. When Satan's working power, purpose, and acceptance is in our life due to willful sin, God's providential working, his power, his purpose, his acceptance will not be in our lives. He will not have his hand upon us. We don't need to serve the enemy. He is the one who wounds God's people spiritually. Even private sins undermine the saints. He, directly or indirectly, if a man is controlled by the devil, people will sense it, they will see it, they will have that example, and they will be influenced by it. Luke 8, 16 says, No one lights a lamp and covers it with a jar, but puts it on a bed. Instead, he sets it on a lampstand to those who can see the light. If we are Christians, we need to shine. We need not cover our deeds. We need to expose our righteous ways to promote God's influence. We can't, should not conceal such things. Every sin will be revealed in its due course and time. If you're his, you will be counterproductive to God's plan. If you're the devil, let me repeat that again. If you are the devil's, if you belong to him, you will counter be counterproductive to God's plan. He is doing the very exact opposite of what God wants of you in his life. In God's life, he wants you to be a certain way. The devil wants you to be the opposite. The Father wants to strengthen his people and his church. The enemy wants to weaken the followers of Christ Jesus. He wants to harm the church. You're either in God's camp or the devil. There is no middle ground. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 2, it says, This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving and carrying out his, God's commands. If you say you love God's people, you show it, you follow God. In fact, this is the love of God to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. Everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Greater is he that is in the world. No, that's not what we are supposed to believe. Greater is God than he who is in the world. We who follow God are stronger, better, greater than the devil and those that follow the world. God is greater. We need to rely on his force and his power. And if we love God and follow his commandments, which are not burdensome, then it says we are born of God and we overcome the world. So who do you serve? By your actions you will be known. Whether you serve that principality, Satan, or you serve God. Who possesses you? Who owns your life? Who is in you through your actions made manifest? Again, you don't have to worship the beast. You don't have to do magic to have the devil working in you. All you have to do is kneel your yourself, bow your head, bend down, and pay homage to sin and let that rule your life. If you do, the devil rules your life as well.